Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop once again. Now I just finished diagnosing one of those really oddball trans concerns on this 2006 Ford Explorer with a 6R60 transmission in it. And the end result, the fix, is just gonna blow your freaking mind. It's one of those things you never think of when you're trying to diagnose and fix a trans concern, okay? Now the point of this video, the goal of this video, is to help independent repair shop technicians, uh, you know, even dealership technicians, and of course the owner, so they don't get taken by these shops just kind of trying to throw parts at it, guessing because they're frustrated or they just don't know exactly what's going on. Think about it, the mechatronics unit for this transmission is $1,700 by itself, basically the valve body with a module inside of it, okay? It all comes as one unit. As you can see, it can get really expensive real quick once they start guessing. Now the concern this customer was having is that on our two hour road trip, uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the transmission just started banging into gear really hard, like it was not normal at all. And it was kind of shift hunting, it was just kind of all over the place, very erratic shifting and trans operation. Even when he came to a stop sign and he was not moving at all, the back end would kind of load up in there, it would let loose a little bit and then bang, 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 bang. It's like the transmission was possessed. He was expecting the worst, thought the trans was toast. Okay, now after a while, the trash control light and the wrench light will come on in the cluster, and that is basically telling you that the transmission went to a limited operating strategy, and after that, the concern will be totally gone. But you'll be stuck with high line pressures, and you'll be stuck in, I think, third or fourth gear. That's a limp home mode, uh, so you can actually get home without destroying the transmission. So what I'm going to do today is show you guys exactly what to look for and then of course the fix. And I'll make it as quick as possible so anybody can follow this and anybody can fix this vehicle and this trans concern in the end. Let's go check it out. All right, let's get started. Now the one thing I didn't mention so far is this fix, this exact concern, only applies to the 2006 to 2010 Ford Explorer with a 4.6 liter three valve engine in it because this engine was made it to the 6R60 transmission whereas the old 4.0 liter sock was made it to the old 5R55S transmission which does not apply, okay? Just a little note there. Now the very first thing I did when I, the vehicle came in is I pulled codes on all the different modules in the network and I noticed a lot of the modules were reporting this U1900 code which basically means they're receiving invalid data on the network from the other modules on the high speed CAN network, okay? So there's a couple different modules with that code in it and that code right there is key. The other one that is truly the most important code is this one right here in the PCM. U0101, which basically means the PCM lost communication with the transmission down inside of the, the mechatronics unit inside the transmission, okay? Now, after that wrench light comes on the cluster, this code will be set, okay? And the only way to read it is to leave your vehicle running. So when, once that wrench light comes on the cluster, go to AutoZone or your, your independent repair shop and go get the codes read, but don't turn the vehicle off. Leave the vehicle running, go inside, get them to come out and read the codes. Then they'll get this code right here, okay? If you have this code and this code right here, sure enough, this is gonna be your fix. That's good news for you. All right, now at this point we know that transmission control module way down yonder is losing communication with the PCM up here. We just didn't know why. So the next logical step for me, my pre-checks, my diagnosis, is to get in there by the trans control module and start testing, low testing the powers and the grounds coming into it to make sure it has sufficient amperage to run all those solenoids and still talk on this module commu communications network. Sure enough, everything checked out fine. At that point, I took a little break from that and I decided to go after this misfire I was having on cylinder number two, okay? Right here on number two. And the reason being is we had to fix this. We have no, no engine performance issues and we could properly diagnose the trans. Uh, but also I know when these coils break down internally, they can start producing a lot of EMI and RFI interference, okay? And once they do that, it starts messing with a lot of different sensors on the vehicle, usually the cam sensors, but especially the electronic throttle bodies. We had a real problem with that in the Lincoln LS where it would just shut down the throttle body because the ignition coil was breaking down. 
So I decided to take care of that, took care of it, went for a road test to make sure the misfire is gone, and guess what? The trans concern was gone too. Now why? Why was that? Well, I did a little bit of research and I found out in this particular engine configuration with super cheapy coils like this one had in it, it had four of them actually. You see this coil right here? It's one of those $8 ignition coils that you find on eBay. They're super, super cheap. Well, it started breaking down and producing all the interference. Now, why is it gonna affect the transmission? Well, on this particular vehicle, the harness, you can see it comes up right there behind the valve cover here, up and over, past all these coils, okay, in the harness here, all the way up to here, and then it branches off, it goes over and connects to the PCM. So all along the way here, it's picking up interference from these coils as they're breaking down and inducing voltage into that CAN bus signal, thereby having an erratic signal between the PCM and the TCM down below. So like I said, this trans concern, those exact codes, this exact engine configuration where they're running right past it here is where you're gonna have that kind of fault, okay? So you need to take a hard look at your ignition coils on this side and see if any of them are cracked or, hey, are they full of these ones right here, these $8 cheapy ones that are gonna break down over a year's time and cause this kind of concern. Now, I've never seen a Ford coil cause this concern, but it's, of course, anything's possible. Um, at that point, once you have those codes, I would go in here and I would change all four coils on this bank as I did on this customer's vehicle. And I tell you, the trans operation, the vehicle's power, everything was back big time because there was no interference in this CAN bus line no more. That's all there was to it. Now, changing a coil out on here is actually very, very simple. On a cold engine, you simply come in here, you disconnect the injector, get it out of the way, and then you come in here, you disconnect the ignition coil, okay? And then there's a seven millimeter screw right there. Take it out, pop the new one in, tighten it down, and then you can go ahead and just start clipping these back in until they click, okay? Make sure they click, just like that. And that's how fast it can be to change an ignition coil. So it'll take you about five minutes to change this whole bank right here, and your concern will be fixed. I hope I helped you guys fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time, guys.